episode is brought to you by Support the Mountain's Herbal Parasite Cleanse. This formula targets the small and large intestinal tracts and larvae, the most broad-spectrum formula available today. 100% organic, formulated by Dr. Mikio Sanki, author of the Esoteric Acupuncture Series. For 10% off your first bottle, visit shopyogahub.com and use the coupon code CLEANSE at checkout. Hello and welcome to YHTV's Magical Medical Tour. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Christina Suzuma, and with me is our wonderful medical guide, Dr. Glenn Woolman. Hello, Dr. Woolman. Greetings, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Fantastic. Or should I say, comment ça va? Ah, oh, très bien. Oh, uh, excellent. Did I answer right? <laughs> we'll find out with we'll our very out. special guest today. Uh, greetings, everyone. Welcome to Magical Medical Tour. I'm Dr. Glenn Wallman. I will be your guide along with Christina today as we travel through yet another quadrant of the healthcare galaxy in search of optimal health. And today we'll, we will be speaking with a dear friend and colleague, Chantal Evrard. Uh, but before we meet her, Christina, if people want to get in touch with us, how do they do that? Yes, thank you. Um, at any time during the show, you can feel free to ask a question or make a comment simply by scrolling down on your screen and typing it into the comment box. Now, you can do this at any time. It, it, you can a year later, two years later, it doesn't matter because we will collect those messages and we will uh, surely pass it on to Dr. Woolman or our special guest and... Uh, uh, give you an answer. And if you are listening to this on a device like your iPhone or Android, um, just give us a call at 818-LET'S-TALK. 818-LET'S-TALK. Thank you, Dr. Wolman. Uh, you're welcome. You know, Christina, on Magical Medical Tour, we focus a lot on medicine, Western medicine, but we do go into other areas, uh, alternative, integrative, or again, what I call combinatorial practices of medicine and healing. And today we are going to be in that realm of the universe. We're going to be speaking with Chantal Ivrard. She's a yoga instructor in the practice of Hatha Yoga. She's also a certified pranic healer and has created her own line of essential oils to treat people through aromatherapy. And we're going to find out about all of this today. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Chantal Evrard. Welcome, Chantal. Namaste, Dr. Woolman and Christina. It's an honor to be on the Magical uh, Medical Tour today from Dr. Woolman. Thank you. Uh, what we usually like to do, we like to take advantage of people that speak uh, in other languages, and I would like to ask you if you wouldn't mind welcoming in your French language all of the French-speaking people that watch our show. Welcome to Magical Medical Tour, and wish everyone optimal health, and thank them for uh, being with us. Would you with do that? With great pleasure, Dr. Woolman. Bienvenue à la revue du Dr. Woolman and Christina. C'est mon grand plaisir de être sur cette magnifique um, chaîne et je voudrais vous souhaiter une journée pleine d'amour, de soleil et de bonne santé. Merci I couldn't beaucoup. have said it better. <laughs> <laughs> Loved every moment. <laughs> yes. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> So, as the medical guide, Chantal, I usually like to tell our audience where we're going to go. So, at the beginning, we're going to learn a little bit about you and how you became a healer, what interested you, and what influenced you in healing. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to talk about your yoga practice and the things you do with that. We're then going to move into pranic healing to introduce people that may have never heard of that as another form of healing for people. And then we're going to talk about your line of essential oils and aromatherapy, and then we'll see where else we go. Is that all right with you? Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you very, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Exciting topic, my favorite topic. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Wordman. Yeah. All of this is, a, is going to be our favorite topics, and I think a lot of our uh, viewers are going to learn many other things today that they can do for themselves for healing. You know, many people go to doctors for healing, uh, but sometimes there are things that you can do on your own or in your own practice, and that's what we're going to talk about today. 
today. So let's let's get started and find out a little bit about you, where you're from, and what influenced you in becoming a healer and a practitioner of yoga and pranic healing. Wonderful. So you must know with my accent that I'm from France, from Europe. And uh, when I was a little girl, um, I was seeing energy instead of physical body. And my grandma was very concerned because uh, I was all the time crying and she didn't understand. So when I moved to the United States, I was very lucky to meet uh, my teacher, spiritual teacher, Master Shoa Koksui, who is the founder of Pranic Healing. And from there, I learned what was exactly energy. And I learned that in the, we have the physical body and we have the invisible body. In the invisible body, you have your aura and your chakra. So I learned in the U.S. exactly what was the energy body. And that changed totally my life because I could understand what was going on. So uh, coming from Europe, you know, everybody smoke, everybody drinks. So <laughs> it influenced me tremendously to live a life of good health and happiness. And that's worked for you all the way, hasn't it? So be it, and so it is. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So uh, energy bodies, let's talk about that for just a few minutes, because obviously in Western medicine, we don't treat energy bodies too much. What is it about the energy body that you see and influences you in terms of your process of recognizing things when you're working with someone and how how do you uh, affect those energy bodies yes uh, very simple there's nothing to believe it we born with it so for example in 1939 uh, kirkland was a famous photographer photographer from russia he was taking already picture of aura all right so if you have somebody in front of you that smoke, lie, drink, not a very good person, but can be changed, correct? What's the color of the aura? Do you think it's going to be, Dr. Woolman? It's going to be gray. I'm going to say gray or green or black uh, or something. A gray, grayish, muddy brown, because this is the color of the smoke and the dirty energy, all right? If we can call that dirty energy, it's... Mm -hmm. All right. So, for example, if I look at beautiful Christina, I see some light blue, some pink, some gold. And if I look at Dr. Woolman, I see a master within him also, because uh, as a doctor, doing so much service for the universe as a, um, at the hospital, helping people, I can see a crown with a lot of gold, a lot of beautiful color, pink, Love on the soothing, healing energy. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, yes. And it brings up an interesting question. I yes. always thought that in order to do something like this, you would have to be around the person to uh, see the energies. But clearly through Skype and through other forms, you can still see energies. Can you see an energy in a person uh, when you're not even visually seeing them? Absolutely. Okay. So, um to explain to you, um, I'm teaching uh, Grandmaster Shoa Koksui workshop every month, and in two days you can learn pranic healing to see aura. Mm. The other thing also, um, I forgot what you were asking me, the other question. What was it? Well, I wanted to know if you could see energies in someone that is yes. not visual to you at that moment. Thank you, yes. For example, in pranic healing, we learn the long-distance healing. Mm -hmm. And long-distance healing, you don't have to have the person in front of you. You visualize the person in front of you. Because understand that we all live in the earth energy. We all connected. For example, if you're thinking about Christina, suddenly she call you. Oh, you said, I was just thinking about you. Or if Christina walk on the street and she's thinking of somebody and then the person appear. So this is, the thought is very important. Light Does, attract light and that's what it is. We live on the earth energy and we all connect and you, we all one. 
And as soon as we all start thinking like that, things will be better, won't they? Absolutely. We have to watch what we said because it starts to be materialized. Makes sense, huh? Yes, it does. So, Can, go ahead. Love and kindness, good words, is always very important because we have to watch what we said. Beautiful. Can you see, do you see your own energies and lights? Uh, can you see something, if something is wrong, you're not feeling well, can you tune into yourself? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So energy um, has a feeling also, like in pranic healing we call scanning. And scanning, you can use your hand around the physical body to feel the congestion or the depletion. Like, for example, when the women have their period, they feel congested, correct? There correct. Are a lot of well, I mean, I don't know. No, no, they... no. But you, I mean, you know enough to be a doctor that women are congested. They have tendency to have sore throats. Their the belly are swelling. They, they, they're warm. They're not feeling good. Or the opposite things could be when you lose blood a lot, you could be depleted because you're losing iron. Make sense? Yes, it does. So, that's what it I is. I like that. Okay. Yes. I, I got that. And thank you for sharing a little bit of the energy work that you do. And we're probably going to cover a lot of that in our, our talk and discussion today. I want to move into yoga. Yes. You're a practitioner of Hatha Yoga. Correct. And we're, we're seeing more in actually the Western uh, world of medicine that yoga actually does benefit people in terms of their health. What was it that got you interested in yoga first? What helped me with yoga, it's the breathing. Mm. You're a doctor. You know if you're not breathing, you're dead. <laughs> so basic on that, basically on that, the breath of life is very important. The mm -hmm. breath of life gives you tremendous energy, correct? Yes. So yoga works on different systems, respiratory system, respiratory system works on different systems. So it helps the body to be healthy. How to get healthy, it's breathing, whole food diet, correct? Yes. Also, regular exercise, absorbing a lot of life force, better to exercise outside because you have some great oxygen going to your brain. Meditation, yoga is part of that also. And also singing, singing open your heart chakra. It is so important. So when you sing the mantra, you know a mantra, right. it's a word that you repeat, and give you tremendous healing, soothing energy. So all the combination of this make your body super, super strong and with good energy. You're shining like a beautiful sun. <laughs> beautiful. Chantal? Yes. If somebody decides at some point in their life, they, they watch programs, they talk to people and say, oh, I'm going to start doing yoga. Now, we know there are many different types of yoga. How does someone, first of all, choose what type and does that matter? All right. Always very important to listen to your body and talk with your teacher, the instructor. Because obviously, Dr. Wilman, you know, if you have a knee surgery, you're not going to be able to do, or if you're pregnant, you're not going to be able to do what all do normally. So, my class that I teach, it's always the same way that I look at who is in the class. I ask questions, how's the body today? And do you have any injury, any surgery? And I will do my class based on who is in the class because obviously, you know, beginner can be advanced and advanced can be beginner sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I like that. Yes, That's absolutely. Beautiful. And no challenge, no challenging. It's just to let go. At the moment you enter the class, you're there to practicing. And we said that your inside body, it's the temple. You're not there to listen what the other one said. You're there to focus on yourself because it's your prime time. It's your moment. 
you have one hour to let go and let God. Make sense? Yeah, so again, though, but if there are so many different types of yoga studios, I want to know uh, how does someone choose for themselves whether to take this kind of yoga, like a a Hatha yoga or a Bikram yoga or Mm -hmm. another type of yoga? All right. So very simply, if you are somebody who likes to do restorative yoga, that will be a lot of posture on the back, open up back and low back. We have the Hatha yoga, which is five breaths in each posture. So you take time. It could be very deep. You have Ayenga. Ayenga is very precise and very, very um, energizing also. Mm. And you have also different type of yoga that it's one move, one breath. And that yoga, they call power yoga. Um, Mm. (laughs) Whatever they call. But, you know, flexibility is power. So the most important thing, um, I observed that people who play tennis, who doesn't stretch, when they come in the yoga class, they're not able to do half of the class correctly. Because their body are not flexible. They're so tense. They lift weight. What do you do when you lift the weight? You build tension on your body. Yoga, you use your own weight. Mm. It makes sense? Yes. Very nice. And that is very simple. One of the things that I see with people that I treat periodically, they, they, go, they start at a not at a young age, but they decide they're going to do yoga at some point in their life, and they see someone uh, as talented as you are, for example, as an instructor and flexible, and they want to emulate the master. And suddenly they're trying to do positions that actually hurt them. So how do you, as a yoga instructor, work with people like that? First of all, I always start my class by telling them, them that there's no challenge, no challenging. It is very important that your practicing has to be done for yourself. And um, when I see somebody in my class who are not aligned with their own body, I come and ask them to relax their shoulders, Mm -hmm. to relax their face, to soften their heart, Mm -hmm. and to not use their will, just Ah. to let go. Because this is very important. It's all about letting go. And if you start to think during your class, just let go all your thoughts. Let go all your day. There is nowhere to go, nothing to do, just to let go. And this is very important. Because living in this world right now, we need to let go. Mm. When someone wants to start a yoga practice and they start taking classes, is this something... You know, when somebody works out with weights, they usually have a day that they want to rest and recuperate and restore. In yoga, if you have a yoga practice, should it be a daily practice? Should it be once or twice a week? Should it be, what should it be? First of all, listen to your body. This is the most important thing. Okay. So if you can take two times a week yoga, if you can do once a week, it's better than nothing. So most important thing, if you want to start yoga, you can start by a restor- restorative yoga or hataki, hatha yoga because you need to be inspired and always talk with your teacher first because if you have a bad experience, it doesn't work for the first time. So I always want to be an inspiration for my student. So I said, listen to your body. I think you're doing wonderful. Hmm. You, you know, you just brought something up about, about listen to your teacher. Uh, aside from choosing a style of yoga, how does, what does someone look for in a yoga instructor? Well, like I explained before, it's always good to start from the very beginning to be sure you don't injure yourself and you learn the asana, which is called posture, in the proper way. The alignment of the body is extremely important to go into different posture. Balance is power. So we talk about Hatha Yoga. Ha means sun, ta, moon. The, the sun corresponds to the male side, 
which is your right side, and the moon correspond to your left side, connect with the female side. So practicing yoga, living, <clears throat> lifting your right arm and then lifting your left arm, you balancing what we call the yin and yang. And at the end of the session, you feel totally center. At the middle of the universe, your brain is clear like crystal. I love that. <laughs> How's that for you? Love Dr. it. Woman. <laughs> That's good. So I think basically what you're saying is we should all choose you as your as our instructor. <laughs> no, 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 no. You go. I just explained that you go talk with your instructor first. Yeah. And you said, you know, hey, I'm a beginner. Hey, I'm an advanced. All right. Okay. You know, so the teacher will say whatever they want to say. But in my class, that's what I'm practicing. I'm practicing moderation discipline. Now, we talk about your classes, but you're doing something very special. You just started something very special. And this is important for people that are around the world, practitioners of yoga, uh, that would like to be able to travel uh, and also continue to do their yoga. You, you have a new program that you've started at Lotus Land here in Santa Barbara. I'd like you to discuss that for a few minutes, if you wouldn't mind. No, with great pleasure. First of all, Lotus Land, it's 37 acres. It's a beautiful land. The owner of this land was Madame Ganawalska. And Madame Ganawalska gave this beautiful land to Monicito in Santa Barbara. And it's a foundation. It's 16 different gardens. Uh, for this, this moment, the lotus land, the lotus flowers blooming. We have cycad. Mm -hmm. We have 500 different uh, specimens of uh, cacti. And I am, you know, Dr. Woolman, you have been there. And it's, it's heaven on earth. It's the most beautiful place on earth. So I've been a dozen there. That means I give the tour for two hours. Um, once a week, I'm a volunteer, and we we describe the beauty, uh, the plant, the medicinal plant, the beautiful trees coming from all over the world. We give a beautiful tour in the Japanese garden, and that gave me a lot of pleasure because every time I'm there, I regenerate a lot of life force. I absorb a lot of a lot of oxygen, and it's very important. And people who goes there. After the tour, I can see they look different. They're happy, they have a big smile, and they just love everything. So what I've been starting is to do yoga in different gardens. And um, it's up to certain group of people. So you can always contact the Lotus Land and ask for a private yoga session over there. That's just beautiful. I, I mean, as you said, I've been in the uh, Lotus Land area and I've taken your tour and it's not only beautiful, it's very educational, a lot of knowledge in many different areas and it's very inspiring. And I would imagine that being able to go and work with you in the different gardens and do yoga practices, people have the opportunity now to sign up for something like that and they could do it for a few days or a week, or how does that work? No, we just start. We just start. So it has to be on call, has to be asked for, you know, uh, to the director at Lotus Land. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to add something that Lotus Land, it's about preservation, conservation, education. We have a lot of school, uh, children's school, who's coming for education and it's so important because the time they are there, they learn about Mother Earth and they're not on the computer or text messaging, but to come back to the yoga there, we just start this program. That's why uh, the director, uh, Gwen, um, she let me do this DVD, yoga DVD. That is a project that has been uh, for more than two years. And I've been very grateful that Dr. Wallman is a great musician and great singer, so some of his talented musician music is in the beautiful DVD. And the producer, Patrick, and the photographer, Frank Cullen, has been, from the point of love, offering the precious work um, to 
the love of Madame Diana Walska, Lord Duslan, and myself. And also, uh, we have another doctor, Dr. Diamond, also, who has been uh, very kind to play some music for us for the DVD. We have, we've interviewed Dr. Dan Diamond on the show, and I wanted to uh, just uh, let all of our viewers, especially the ones that know me, don't worry, I won't be singing on this DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Christina, any thoughts on yoga before we move on to pranic healing or, or Chantal, do you have anything else you want to talk about with yoga? Anything, any final thoughts before we move on? No, uh, what I want to say to my friend here who listened to us, it is very, very important. Please, please, please eat a lot of vegetable, a lot of fruit, keep yourself moving, have good thoughts always. Do mm -hmm. services. Services is very important. If you have some pain, just do services. Go, just go to the soup kitchen and just help those people. And you will see, when you come out of this place, you will feel, wow, I'm so grateful. I feel good. My pain is gone. You know? So it is very important to, like Mother Teresa said, you know, think locally, act globally. We need to help each other. And this is my living everyday life. I want to help the universe. And healing is very important. And I'm very grateful, uh, Dr. Wallman and Christina, that you invite me on this beautiful, magical medical tour from Dr. Wallman. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I just want to say before, maybe Christina is going to make a comment here, that uh, knowing Chantal, she is the living embodiment of that. She is all about service. And... You see that in everything she does. Mm, lovely. Well, coming from you, Dr. Wolman, it's an honor. I accept this compliment. But I'm, I want to mention also for like more than 12 years, I've been singing in the choir, um, mm -hmm. uh, all mission in Santa Barbara. And um, Roy Spicer is our director of music, and it's amazing. And the Franciscan you know, at the old mission. And we have been to Rome and sing for the Pope. It was a true honor and a divine experience. So singing is very important. It opens your heart and it really feels all the angels of the choirs coming when you're singing, they love. And also, I want to tell you that I talk with you physically right now, but also in the invisible world, we have a lot of invisible helpers. Like mm -hmm. you have the angel, the archangels, uh, the divine mother, the divine father, whatever you're practicing, and the one you love, please, please, please talk and ask for divine blessing, for guidance. Because as you talk to them, they will appear because they're being of light and they're there. That's the work in the, in the invisible world to help you. Mm, beautiful. Ah, oh, Chantal, it's lovely, and it's such an honor to have you here on the show with us. Um, Chantal, when you teach yoga at Lotus Land, um, you mentioned that you teach in the different gardens. Correct. Is there, um, a, do you choose the different garden on the day of that you're teaching, or do you have a schedule that you go by? Usually what we do, we do a tour. Um, and when we feel some garden that we like, we do some breathing exercise, and we have a little cottage also where we have mat, and we go there to be a little bit more private. But you know that meditation is very important in yoga. Just to be in the garden is a state of meditation. Mm. And when you go shopping in the grocery store, <laughs> well, it could be very meditative also. Mm. Depends of your vibration and your attitude. Correct. Yes. If you have attitude with gratitude and you look at everybody like your best friend, it's, it's, a piece, it's a piece of peace to be in the store to buy food because you can afford to buy food. Makes sense? Some mm -hmm. people doesn't have the food. So everything is a divine blessing for everything in your life. Every minute we have to think this way mm. for a better life. Make sense? Mm. Mm, absolutely wonderful. Um, so, so with Lotus Land, um, if one is to uh, do a yoga session with you, um, it's on their schedule at Lotus Land. 
Not yet. We just start, we're experiencing right now. It can be on call. I mean, we call, you know, and just ask the permission and see the way the day, because understand that it's a very busy place, but we can have a, a day, which is Wednesday, that we can practice in yoga. Mm, so nice. everything has to be discussed with Lotus Fan. You know, I would imagine, Christina, knowing uh, the way Chantal takes people through the gardens, she has a sense which garden seems to be more active. Sometimes there are blooms in one garden uh, and things that are happening that might, uh, especially with her sense of everything around her, probably would pick the gardens that are most active and most appropriate for what the people's needs are at that point. But that's just my guess. Yeah, but it's the also... The taste of the guests. Yeah. You know, some guests like cacti, those are not my favorite because they they have like, they're very straight. They, you know, I like movement, you know. I really like, for the moment, it's the time to go because the lotus is blooming. And the lotus flower is symbol of purification and reincarnation. And it's a very special flower that... It's very rare here in the U.S. You go to Asia, you go to India, they offer the flower um, to the deities there, you know. Mm -hmm. But here it's a celebration. Let's talk about pranic healing now. Let's move on to pranic healing. And I, I'm guessing they're all connected. So give us a definition of what pranic healing is. I mean, I'm pretty sure that a lot of our listeners and viewers know what it is, but there may be some people out there that don't. So give yes. us a definition. With great pleasure. So pranic healing, it's an art and science of healing that utilize the prana. What is prana? It's life force. What is life force? It's life energy. Qi for the Chinese, Qi for the Japanese, Rua for the um, island and Rua is for the Jewish people, I'm sorry. And mana is for the island. So we utilize this life force to heal the whole physical body. So it's a non-touch healing. So we not touch the physical body. We're moving the hand around the physical body. So we have what we call the general sweeping. We move the hand. We get rid of all negative thoughts from negative feelings, we're cleaning the aura. How to clean your aura yourself also is by exercising. And in pranic healing, we believe that the body has the ability to heal himself. So Dr. Woolman, you know that it's very important, I'm sure, that we keep the holistic approach and the Western approach together. And that gives a beautiful result. Don't you think so, Dr. Woolman? I do, and I also have to uh, come forth and say that I have done some of your pranic healing with you uh, when I had some injuries. And just to let uh, our viewers know, when I choose to use uh, alternative medicine or combinatorial medicine in various forms, there's a number of things that are important to me. One is to trust the practitioner, to know that the practitioner has their attention on me and in the moment, and their intention is pure and good for helping me to find what's wrong and to give me a path to heal it. And I always look for the first process of Western medicine, which is do no harm. And when I work with uh, Chantal, clearly I trust her and I have her intention and attention and she never does any harm. And then the second part is, is there any good that comes out of it? And I can honestly say that that does happen for me, and it has helped me in many of my different healings. How does a person choose and find out about a pranic healer in their community? So, first of all, you have pranichealing.com. It's a, a website that everybody can tune into it. We're offering free meditation. Master Co is in charge of California, and uh, Dr. Glenn Mendoza is the director of the hospital in New York, and actually some nurse in the emergency room practicing 
pranic healing. Pranic healing is now expanding tremendously all over the world. I used to travel with Grandmaster Shoa Cox, who is the founder of Pranic Healing, and um, this like 75 different country. Uh, you can tune into the website pranichealing.com. There is an international website. I mean, I have myself also a clinic every Wednesday at YMCA Monecito, offer to the community. Uh, it's practicing a lot in LA. New York, I mean, it's everywhere, Brazil, Italy, it's big also, because Italy people are very receptive also, because um, they love to pray also, and they love meditation. But anyway, it's open to everybody. India, it's huge also. How does it work? How does it work? It's very simple. So it's a non-touch movement, and uh, we move the hand. We have... Uh, we clean the aura, so we're cupping the hand, and we go all the way down. We don't use, we do just use our intention. We never use a will, like you said. Mm -hmm. And we're cleaning the aura, the health ray, because the health ray has perpendicular line that help the body to expel the toxin out of the physical body. And the perpendicular line, if you take a look on Lady de Guadalupe picture, they have perpendicular line around her. Those are the health rays, a luminous light coming out of the part of the skin. And also, uh, you have your aura that we can totally clean by, like I explained, general sweeping. And then we have your chakra. The chakra are power station that control and energize your physical organ. But this is, in, in a few words, it's very difficult to explain, but it's in two days taking my workshop, you learn the old technique. And mm -hmm. uh, it works. You can learn how to see aura. You can learn how to do long distance healing. You can learn how to do Self-healing, very important thing. You learn meditation because when you do meditation, you're cleaning your body. It's inner purification. When you exercise, it's physical purification. So, for example, we have a simple technique in pranic healing. If you want to experience that, to find if you are in front of your computer and you feel exhausted, you can be on your chair. And close your eyes, and you're going to inhale through the nose for six, all the way up to the crown of the head. Lock the breath, all for three. Exhale for six, all the way down, 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 down to your legs, down to the sole of the feet, all three. Inhale gently for six, all the way up to the crown of the head. All for three. Exhale for six, all the way down, all three, inhale six, all three, and exhale six. And gently open your eyes. What do you feel, Dr. Wolman? Uh, I'm wondering what colors you see in me right now. Brighter. Your aura looks much brighter. And I can feel... Your, your face is way more relaxed. You were relaxed already. What, what, <laughs> what do you think? I feel, I feel good. I always like breathing exercises. And I think, uh, you know, in many of the uh, studies of healing arts and in meditation, breathing and the breath becomes a very important part of what we do. So anytime anybody takes an opportunity to do focused, concentrated breathing, uh, I honor that, and uh, I work on my own process of the Wallman metaphor square breath that uh, we've talked about many times. Uh, so I always suggest to people that if nothing else, just start with the breath, and that's a great exercise. Mm. Christina, you do that too, don't you? Oh, love it. I love breath work um, and uh, the meditation. It's, it, it's, it's always so clearing and so simple. So when people say, I can't meditate, the, the nicest part is to start with the breath. So 
And that's a beautiful uh, uh, segment for, uh, that you brought us through. If I may add also, we have a specific meditation, pranic healing called the Twin Heart Meditation, which mm. is very powerful. It's for peace and illumination. Mm. So um, the meditation on Twin Heart, we just, you know, uh, um, we have an universal prayer, which is the prayer of St. Francis of the Sisi. It's a universal prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Mm. Inhale the peace. And you bring your hand in the blessing posture and you visualize the Mother Earth like a little ball and you keep your hand. When I see hatred, let me see love. From your heart, you bless the earth with bright light, pink, mm. loving energy, and you bless your friend and family. So uh, we go to the, the prayer. When I see sadness, let me see joy, inhale the happiness. And from your heart, bless the earth with happiness. When I see despair, hope, because hope is very important, bless the earth with hope, all your family, your work, your co-worker, the universe. Mm. When you see sadness, joy, it's very important. And forgiveness is very important, because if you cannot forgive, mm. you're yes. not moving forward. So, so when you see, this is very important. And then we concentrate on the crown of the head, now we concentrate on the crown of the head, we activate the crown, and we said, we bless the earth with the, the bright light from the crown and said, may every person, every being be divinely blessed with good health, happiness, with peace, with unconditioned love, with the goodwill and the will to do good. And mm. then you use your heart and your crown with bright light and you bless the earth and said, may every person, every being, without exception, be divinely blessed with unconditioned love, with harmony, with soothing healing energy, and the goodwill in the world to do good. Mm. And then after that, you can do singing two, three times the mantra Om or Amen, and you receive between the two mantra, there is a gap that makes you feel very peaceful, and sometimes it activates the crown, and you feel the healing energy is going down to your crown and all your body and after the session you feel clean clear and peaceful and it's a very very beautiful tool mm. it's the meditation twin heart mm. and if Lovely. you go on pranikilling.com you can download that you can listen for free it's a meditation for peace and illumination mm. beautiful the, yes oh we shall do that for sure and this is part of the pranic healing meditation Correct. That's the founder of Pranic Healing, mm. Master Shoa Cox, who just did this wonderful, wonderful meditation that is very universal and very, mm. very good. I, I, I sense that there's a lot of similarities with the yoga and the pranic healing. Um, when I say yoga, more towards the Eastern philosophy of yoga, you know, in India, which, you know, the yoga in India is more based with the meditation and every asana is a meditation, as opposed to Western Hemisphere. It, it, they, we've sort of created it into more uh, a movement, an exercise, and uh, sort of taken away from the meditation portion itself. So, so is am I correct to say that that there's a lot of similarities between the two? You describe very clearly that in my class, for sure, I'm not doing as a power exercise I use as a philosophy um, to use your love and kindness for your body and for other and practicing diligently meditation services. Mm. It's part of yoga. It's all about what's a, yogi, what's a yogi? It's a person who try to be a better person every day, correct? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And you do that all the time. You're a walking person that is always trying to be a better person and make people around you feel better. When somebody comes to you for a pranic healing, uh, how long is a session? Well, usually it's an hour. Mm -hmm. It's an hour session. And are and there things... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. People um, like to, at the beginning, to expel. They talk. Sometimes um, they start to come with all things, so they expel what bothered them for a long time. 
So as I clean all the chakra, like I said, the chakra control energize all her, your organ, but also um, remember one thing that is very important. It's not the body who control the soul. It's the soul who control the body. So addictions coming from people who think they control the soul. So no, like mm -hmm. chakra also, since they control the organ, they are li like a little pet, the power station. And um, sometimes they, and they have their own little mind, you know, they want to do whatever they want to do. But we need always to practicing and meditate. So that's about it. How does, uh, how is Reiki different than mm. pranic healing? All right, very good question. Reiki, they move the hand on the physical body. Pranic mm. healing, we just clean thoroughly. Sorry, we don't put the hand on the physical body. We clean thoroughly the aura, the chakra. And when the chakra are clean, because they are power station, they're like a circle. And they're coming out of your physical body like a trumpet. So the trumpet is just on the front, mm -hmm. the end of the trumpet, but it's at the root, it's inside your body. So what happened is just we clean the chakra thoroughly and automatically the person feel much better. So um, the question you have, can you repeat again for me? Because I yes. was the difference between Reiki and pranic healing. Yes. So we thoroughly clean the physical body before we energize. When you energize, it's because we um, close, you know, the wound, like you said, we close. It's very clean, so it can be the way it is and stay the way it is. Um, like in other different energy work, they use their hand on the physical body. And sometimes they transfer dirty energy on other spots. But hey, who am I? I'm just, this is my point of view and this is... Um, what I think it's very important to clean first and then energize after when the person is very clean. That's about it. But I love Reiki also. It's a very good uh, art of healing. So I have a question, Chantel. Yes. Um, of course, when you have different clients and different people, we each of us hold a different level of energy. Correct. And a different level of toxins as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you sense that with most individuals that come to you that the first session you're able to clear most of that you're able to clear most of the chakras and and have the energy flow and moving 100 percent, yes because um it's very effective and um the client will tell you right away oh this is amazing i feel fantastic but Remember, we live in the physical world yeah. and we are in constant contact with people. And some people are negative energy. Mm -hmm. If you work with somebody, you complain there all day long. At the end of the day, you exhaust. <laughs> if you are with, with somebody who's just very happy and just like, oh, la, 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 my life is good. I'm so grateful. I'm so happy. I enjoy my life. My life I feel with love and beauty. Yay! So, at the end of the day, you're going to feel, oh, you're going to be so happy. <laughs> but if you hang on, hey, what's up? Why are you doing? Oh, complain, complain. No, it's a waste of time to complain. So the vibration goes with the beautiful thoughts form. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Oh, absolutely. I like the vibration. <laughs> and you both have such a good vibration. <laughs> do, do good vibration. <laughs> We're giving up good vibration. See, you got him to sing, Chantel. Yes. <laughs> Come on, sing it with me, Chantel. We're all giving up good vibration. Okay, move on. <laughs> I, I got an energy source from the universe saying, stop singing and let Chantel keep speaking. No, 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 no. I love when you sing, Dr. <laughs> Woolman. It's so healthy to sing. It's good for your body. Very good Yay. But we'll have our choices. So is there anything else you want to talk about with pranic healing right now? I want to go, we only have a few more minutes, and I want to talk a little about your aromatherapy and your essential oils. Mm. Yes. 
Uh, you don't have to believe everything I have been telling you. You just experience. You go on pranikilling.com and you experience Master Ko. He is a great teacher and we're so lucky to have him. Unfortunately, uh, Grandmaster Shoa Koksui passed away, but his energy is with us and he's amazing. He's a holy man, holy, mm. holy man. And he's my teacher, a spiritual teacher, a spiritual teacher that um, is just amazing mm. energy work. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> well, that was very nice. So let's talk about aromatherapy and essential oils and how they help people and how they're combined with yoga and pranic healing. What got yes. you into the concept of essential oils? And, in, and by the way, you have your own line of essential oils. Is that correct? Correct. correct. It's called Fleur de Chantal. Fleur de Chantal. Yes. Did I say and that well? Perfect, Dr. Woman. You should uh, sing merci. in French with me, La Vie en Rose. La anyway, Vie en Rose. <laughs> la Vie en Rose. <laughs> Quand il me prend dans ses bras, je ne sais pas pourquoi, je vois la vie en rose. Il me dit des mots d'amour, des mots de tous les jours, ça me fait quelque chose. Il est entré dans ma vie. Une part de bonheur dont je connais la cause, c'est lui pour moi et moi pour lui dans la vie. Il me l'a dit pour la vie. Mm. La vie en rose, j'aime beaucoup parce que, premièrement, um, Fleur de Chantal, we have rose water. And rose water is fantastic. I grew up with my grandmother using rose water. Rose water. All my product, first of all, are totally organic. What do you have to know that this is a message for all the women who listen to us and for men also. What is very important, what you put on your physical body, on your skin, the body absorb. Your cells absorb, your blood absorb. So if you put chemical on your physical body, you feel not too good. It's not good for you. It smells good maybe. Look always at the label. That is very important. Don't you agree with that, first of all, Dr. Woolman? Uh, very true. All right. So, um, rose water is connected with your heart. Your heart chakra is connected with love, physical love, emotion. And when you spray on your face, also, it gives a beautiful glow. If you have had last night, you had a heavy meal, if you feel your eyes a little bit puffy, you use the spray, the rose water, and it will automatically feel like a veil dropping down from your face. And it's love and sweetness because rose is related with love, correct? Mm. So of course. The, rose, the rose water is fantastic to open your heart chakra. If you have some emotion going on, use the rose. It will soothe you. Now we go to the other one. We have also lavender. Lavender is the universal essential oil. What does lavender? First of all, etherically, it's electric violet. Electric violet is very cleansing, it's soothing, and it's calming. For the children, for the animals, you can use lavender. Or to use lavender, I have the water spray. You can use on your face, you can use on your sheets before you go to bed. It's good for insomnia, it's cleansing your room. Also, if you want to take a bath with sea salt and lavender, it expels all the dirty, what we call, energy. So if, you had, uh, if you're a therapist, you, you, if you are a uh, yoga teacher and you feel that you have been a little bit contaminated or a doctor, you take a salt bath with lavender and you feel rejuvenated after and you feel calm and relaxed to go to bed. This is what lavender, if your dog has a tick, you can put a little bit of lavender when you extract the tick, and it's perfect. In Europe, the veterinary use the mm -hmm. lavender. Understand that I believe that on the planet Earth, the, creation, the creator has been putting some herbs, plant, flower, that is there to heal everyone, even maybe cancer. So, continuing with the next we have the jasmine. Jasmine is allure and attraction. It is very soothing 
<laughs> it's very sweet if you're on your period and you spray lavender. Uh, you spray jasmine. Jasmine make you feel very relaxed because it smells very sweet. And also men recognize jasmine. That's why we said it's allure and attraction. And if you're going to your PMS or if you're going to to uh, change of cycle of life in your age time, you use lavender. But always try first if it's suitable for you because some people are allergic of certain smell. So, but the base of the aromatherapy, it's pretty much that the aroma send a message to your brain to make you feel calm, relaxed, happy. And this is what it is with eucalyptus also. Eucalyptus is a fantastic essential mm-hmm. oil for lungs congestion, for if you have a little bit of um, sinus infection, you're using a eucalyptus, it will help you to open your lungs, help the respiratory system. And we have also the tea tree oil that it's an mm. antiseptic one. You can use to clean your kitchen, you can use on a wound, diluted with a little bit of water, and it's great. So there's many other, other essential oils that are fantastic, but that is my b- basic that I really use, and I think it sends a great message of everyone of peace, love, and well-being. Mm. The uh, cranial nerves in the body, the most primitive and the first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve, which has to do with smell. So I think that's a very important part of healing. Christina, I want to challenge you a little bit here with all of your <laughs> energy work. <laughs> Before the show, now you just listened to Chantal's uh, three... three uh, essential oils that she talked about, the jasmine, which is alluring, the rose water, which opens your heart and has affection, and the lavender, which is calming. I put one of them on today. Uh, Can you tell which one I have on? Am I alluring? Am I uh, loving? Or am I calming today? What did you do? Put all three of them? <laughs> Ooh, very good. Ooh. Didn't expect that, but I'm but I'm gonna still test you anyway. Which one did I put on? I only put on one. I want to say something, if I may. Uh, I have the privilege and the honor that Doctor Woolman has been using the lavender, organic lavender, from my line, and every time. He just bring the topic. He said, did you bring me some lavender? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know that jasmine was alluring, so I may change my whole uh, uh, process here. Jasmine is allure and attraction, yeah. yeah. Well, Dr. But Wilk- I don't have to be having my period, do I? <laughs> don't worry, bit, doctor. You won't be pregnant. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> So, Chantal, this has been great. We're coming to the end of our show. And as we ask all of our guests, although you've given us many tips already, do you have a health tip for us today? Um, Yes, please. Practice meditation, a whole food diet, very important thing. Breathe, happy, services, Chanting and happy thoughts. What else we want in life? And cultivate the peace and blessing and be grateful every day mm. for your beautiful life, for your beautiful physical body, for your hand, your arms, and everything. And I'm very grateful to be on your medica, uh, magical medical tour, Dr. Woolman and Christina. It's a, such an honor for me. Many blessings. Namaste. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. And we're very grateful to you, our special guest, Chantal Evrard, a yoga instructor, a pranic healer, and creator of an essential oil line. Uh, many of the things you've said today have uh, been very wise, and I know our audience will appreciate that. I want to thank my healers and my teachers, uh, Chantal being one of them, Uh, for taking me on my journey today. And thank Yoga Hub, Christina, and Segovia, and all of our viewers and listeners uh, for keeping us where we are today. We will continue to do this with you. And until next time, I wish you all 
optimal health. <laughs> yeah, I said something else, and I think you have to see Goya who's on, on the back and working like an angel. And I have a little angel behind me also, my friend Lulu. And thank you, Christina. Thank you, Dr. Woolman. It's a great pleasure to be with you today. Many Beautiful. blessings to all people on the planet Earth. Thank you. And of course, Chantel, thank you so much for gifting us. And Lulu for helping us set up too. <laughs> it's wonderful. And I, I have to say, you, there's one saying that you gave and gifted us today, which will speak to the younger generations. Um, who, you know, they, they you know, they, they we have to find something that's catchy for them. And I love the attitude of gratitude. I love that because I am going to share that with this young generation over and over. <laughs> attitude of gratitude. So thank you so much, Chantel, for a wonderful show. And of course, you, Dr. Woolman, as uh, you always host a fabulous show for us every week. And as we move forward into optimal health, we would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us in this new platform of education and information. We are grateful for your continuous support, and we look forward to hearing your feedback on how we can serve you better. You can connect with Dr. Glenn Woolman through his website, glennwoolman.com, where we urge you to learn about his metaphor, Square Breath. Or you can follow him on Facebook at The Medical Guide. You can also connect directly with Chantelle Everard through her website, fleurdechantelle.com, fleurdechantelle.com. And of course, we are always grateful for any feedback, suggestions, comments that you might have. Please fill it in the comment box or simply give us a call at 818-LET'S-TALK, 818-LET'S-TALK. And until next time, namaste. If we believe and if we know that we are not alone, then so many of the fears and, and the, the things that feel tenuous to us in our, in our lives, um, it disappears because you know you don't have to decide something on your own. You don't have to cre create or recreate something on your own. That you have the possibility of group mind working with you and, and assisting you in your discovery of who you are and what you are in your...